Hello YouTubers, now today, this is going to be the last video we're doing on this Jeep. Um, we've done obviously all the servicing videos and all that sort of stuff. Um, they were complaining of a, of a vibration and um, a banging noise. We fixed the vibration noise, now we're on to the banging noise. Now as you can see on the back diff, this is the back differential and basically what that does is send powers to the back wheel. You've basically got the engine, obviously at the front you have a transfer box which puts power from the gearbox to the back of the end to the back and then you've got the diff which converts it into basically so the wheels drive now when they change gear they hear a banging and obviously important things like diffs and stuff are supposed to kind of be in one place for obvious reasons now as you can see from this one this one is just moving as you can see it shouldn't do that now there's three bushings on the back of the diff you have these two fellas which is here that goes on the back and these two big rubber bungs stop it from hitting on the actual uh, body of the car so you've got two of them at the back and you've got this fella at the front so we've got three bushings and we're obviously going to replace them and then keep this diff in a nice place no more banging sorted we'll crack on with it now i'm going to do a little one at the front first now i think this is what's causing most of the problems but like everything that's obviously really bad the two back bushings aren't going to be far behind it so obviously these people they're doing everything which is kind of the best thing to do anyway and then at least you know you're 100 percent so basically this is so simple well oh, famous last words um you've got a bolt that goes through there and then you've got two bolts that goes on the diff the bolt that goes through the middle is a 15 mil, so here, and the two bolts that go on the diff are 13 mil. So what I'm going to do is, you can just see, let's see if you can see what I'm doing now. Um, I might not be able to see very well, but you're going to get the idea. This is where the bushing is, where my fingers are here. So I'm just going to release this bolt first. Bolt that goes through the middle. There is a nut here, but it looks like it's like a captive nut, so it's been welded on, so you don't have to hold that, which is good. Now, obviously, it's like anything, you have to be careful, because this is, at the end of the day, underneath the car, it's going to get all the crap on from, you know, just normal road use, plus, if you use it off-road and stuff like that, obviously, it's going to get all caked up in that sort of stuff as well. So... And it's only aluminium uh, housing and stuff, so you have to be careful. If you feel the bolt getting tight or anything like that, just be careful because the last thing you want to do is snap it. There's one bolt that obviously now has released the diff completely. So it's just actually bolted onto the diff now. So Now, looking at that now, I don't know how I'm going to get that out. I might have to drop this subframe here. Uh, to get to fizzy get this out Hopefully I won't have to do that I shouldn't have said it would be easy to should I? If I didn't say that i would be all right And just a quick update day four of my uh, Deadly man flu which is slowly killing me which I haven't mentioned once in my videos because I'm a man I just just gonna mention it now today that I do have the man flu so My voice might be slightly different, but obviously I haven't complained about it once, so uh, yeah, but uh, not long left. Now, I'm feeling lazy today, so I'm going to use my air gun, my little air gun, just to uh, take these bolts off. Now, these are the two bolts that hold the actual um, bushing onto the actual diff, or the mount, should I say. Now, this is where we could run into problems. And unfortunately, there is no room to take it off. Why? See, the problem I'm having is there's just no room to take it out. But this is what annoys me about cars. Why do they do this? Why don't they make them? where you know you can change you don't have to strip half the vehicle apart it's just a fucking joke why the fuck do the arm 
calm. Oh. So, what it looks like I'm going to have to do is maybe drop this front or drop this cross member. But to drop the cross member, it's not just this one, there's one on the back which you can't quite see. So the whole back subframe would have to be dropped, which is not good because that's a lot of work. So what I'm going to do first, if you can see, well, there's the back subframe. Now where my hand is here, you can't see, and unfortunately I can't get a better angle at it. Now, underneath here, I can see, now you can just see it there. This is the second mountain, there's one on each side. This one, it looks like I can do without taking anything down. If I loosen these two, one on both sides, I might have enough room in the diff to take the front, uh, the front um, one out. So I'm going to loosen them now and see. Wish me luck. YouTubers, I know you can't really see what I'm doing, but I'm taking out the big bolt that holds the back bushing in. There we go. The same on to the other side. Bolt. people we have hopefully everything off now this is where it becomes difficult because do I have room to take off any of these things now I'm just trying to move them out of the way because I think with a bit of wiggling I can get the front one out the thing is, we're taking the whole cross member off. So this big bar here and this big bar, it's all connected to the suspension. So it means you have to track it, and it, you know it's a big, big job taken out because there's there's a lot of parts you know that are depending on it being completely and utterly uh, level. If you don't have a tracking machine, you try and do this at home, it's going to be a nightmare. So I know I do normally say you know you can take things off to make it easier but in this situation even if it takes me 10 20 minutes to wiggle this out I will do that because it's going to save me time and a lot of hassle further on so I don't know if this will oh well just look at that oh yeah now it came out as you can see this is just well it's just gone I bet I could even, yeah, I can push that out. Then a tiny bit, oh no, it's gone. See, I can push the whole middle out, as you can see. Just a tiny bit of rubber holding that on, but that is completely gone, considering it's supposed to be like that. So, that one came out, sorted. But, I think I'm going to have problems with the back ones, the ones I said I'm not going to have a problem with. Uh, again, you can see that's the top of it there, look, my finger is there. So I'm just literally, I'm going to try and wiggle these and hopefully get them out. It's one thing getting them out, it's another thing getting them back in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and wiggle this. And if I get one out, I'll uh, turn the camera back on and show you 
If not, I'll get a, uh, a big bar and bend everything out of the way. <laughs> I did it, I did it, I did it. Ooh, a lot of swearing, a lot of pinch fingers, but I did it. Now, it did take about 45 minutes. Um, there was a coffee break in the middle of that um, for a few minutes because I was just getting so annoyed. Anyway, it's done. Well, they're out. Now, these, like I said, weren't too bad. These were nowhere near as bad as the first one we took out. But they're still, I can still move that a lot. You can see, I'm not even putting a lot of pressure on that. And I can move that a lot. So they're basically gone weak compared to the new one, which I can't really move at all. So they weren't gone by any stretch of the imagination, but they were weak. And of course, putting a good one on the front and leaving the two weak ones on the back, all it's gonna do is gonna destroy one on the front again, then you're gonna have to replace them anyway. So you as well off pace like these are doing kind of all at once. Um, even though obviously the you know you have to buy all the bits at once but it does save you money in the long term and if that ever got really bad I mean you could do so much damage you can smash the back diff you know you can smash the transfer box you the drive shot oh man you could do serious damage which would end up costing absolute thousands so you know it's good that um, you can kind of get these things kind of straight away which these have done which is good now so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bang these back in Again, there's no point me showing because like, you can't really see underneath. And again, I don't know how long it's going to take me to put them back in. Um, but at least I didn't have to take down the whole cross member, which even if this takes me an hour to put in, I'm still honestly saving time. Because to take that cross member down and to obviously track it and stuff and to make sure you, know, you don't do any damage because some of them bushings, you can break them bushings, you can break bolts, you can do all sorts. And it's a lot of hassle, so we don't need to do that. So honestly, it doesn't matter if it takes you a few hours to put these things in. Obviously, if you're on the ground doing it on, on jacks, you, it's going to take you a long time. On the lift, is obviously a lot easier. So yeah, I'm going to bang these back in, all three of them, and uh, turn the camera on then, and uh, we'll see what we've done. And we take the test drive in a few hours, hopefully. Fingers crossed. What a f***ing nightmare. But they're on. Now, I've just obviously got to bolt them all up, so I'm gonna I'll show you that. But they're physically in place. But yeah, a lot more swearing, a couple of things thrown, and uh, yeah. But uh, hey, they're on. Now, one thing I do want to say uh, when you're buying parts, especially for uh, Jeeps, for, for some reason, you can buy kind of really cheap parts, okay? So Volkswagen's arms, for example, as well. You know the Volkswagens, they have all the arms in the front. They're cheap, and they're cheap for a reason. At the end of the day, you get what you pay for. The Between the cheap stuff and the expensive stuff, on these bushings, there's maybe 30, 40 euros in it, okay? Which I know is 30, 40 euros, but they're gonna mostly last twice as long. And, you know, they're just better. So. Obviously, I know it's down to money, but if you can, try and buy the, the, the better quality bushings, you know. Don't buy the kind of non-branded, um, kind of generic ones, because the rub in them just isn't as good. Um, they just don't last as long. So, let's crack on, bolt her up, spin the wheel. As you can see, we're all in happy, well, we're in place. Now, this is where you have to be careful, because First thing is you do not want to tighten any bolt fully until you have all nine bolts in. That's just a given, okay? So if you tighten one side fully and then you could cross thread the other side, you could well, you just do damage because you're only going into cast and it's easy to cross thread. They're a big bolt. Do you know, they're just, they're, they're, they're easy to, to destroy the threads inside the diff. If you destroy the threads inside the diff, you're in a world of shit. So what we need to do is just literally kind of manhandle the diff and literally just screw in all the bolts and uh, by hand obviously like I said and then once you get them all in you can actually tighten them then there we go. 
Because what you want to do is if you feel pressure, you should be able to screw these in a good bit of the way by hand. If you start feeling pressure very soon, then you could have a problem, you know, so you just want to be careful. One thing I did notice, and I didn't really check, to be honest, I've got these in wrong. Now YouTube, as it turns out, there's a left and a right. See how this jugs out a lot more than this side? So yeah, left and right. For f sake. F it, f it, and f it. Well, that was my fault. So what I'm going to have to do now, I'm going to have to take, just basically, I've got these on runs. This one needs to go that side, that one needs to go that side. Yeah, great. So uh, I've seen a few more hours and uh, I'll turn the camera back on. So important thing to remember, when you're doing these, like I said at the beginning, there's a left and a right pushing. Um, so don't, don't, I'm only doing this to show you what would happen if you did it wrong. I didn't get this wrong, did this on purpose for you to experience what would happen if, for example, you do it wrong. So I'm doing it wrong for you and showing you how not to do it and then do it right. Okay, sorted. Bye YouTubers, just let you know, obviously I already knew this as I've explained, but I'm just letting you know, the big side goes towards the diff so this basically goes this way and the diff then bolts where i am behind so the big side heads in towards the diff not the little side okay the big side so when you're doing this make sure you get it right otherwise it's going to take you a lot longer i don't make these mistakes but you know you might so just keep an eye on it back to where we was again <laughs> uh i suppose one good thing about this is i'm getting a lot uh, better at putting these in didn't take nowhere near as long this time so I've got the two main bolts in the middle again just hand tightened so now I'm going to lift the diff up to basically suit the brackets again you need to support the diff and just get it in a good bit by hand and uh, then you can worry about tightening everything Like I said, all nine bolts in first before you attempt to tighten anything. Because you want this diff to be square. You don't want it to be off-centered for obvious reasons. And the reason why I say tighten everything, for example, I put these in quite easy. And with the diff resting, the top bolt didn't go in. I had to lift the diff up a tiny bit to line the bolt up. So, you know, it does make all the difference. As you can see, I'm lifting up the diff again. And it's going in. Now, a bit of a wiggle. So then, six bolts on on the back. And I'm going to obviously do the front three bolts now. So, I'll bring you in a bit closer. Now, this is the bushing, this is the front bushing. Same again, I'm gonna put the big bolt in first. Line the big bolt up. Pull it through. Again, just by hand. So that's start through. And we're about, even though them, them bolts are in at the back, we're still about half an inch off from the front. So as you can see, we can still, we can see how much we can move that. So this is why it's important not to tighten anything because, now don't get me wrong, if you tighten them, there will be play in the rubber for you to bend it. But all you're doing is putting pressure on the rubber then. And it just means that the, the bushing is gonna go a lot quicker. So you literally put them all on and tight.
Yeah. It's one up. And there we go. Get it lined up. No, nope, took out the front one. Just gonna get the socket. It's just in a little bit. It's pretty, pretty easy for me. Just to do it with the socket on. Now. Whew. There, it's quite hard. Heavier than you think. So, that one's on. One more to go. All I've done is I've just put the 30mm socket on the bar. Just gives me a bit more room to, to turn it. Still doing it by hand. But it just gives me that bit of extra room to uh, physically turn it. Now, we're all in. And what I'm going to do is, to make sure it's nice and even, I'm just going to turn the back wheel. So I'm just turning the diff, I don't know if you can see it turning. The dry shaft is now turning. So I'm just going to make sure if it is kind of just out of line, hopefully by turning it, turning the wheel this is, it might just pull it back in line. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go around all the bolts and not tighten them, just nip them. Then I'm going to spin the wheel again and uh, then tighten them kind of properly for the last time. Then I'm going to cheat with the airline. Now all I've done there is tightened two, four, six bolts just the ones that are bolted to the diff. I haven't tightened the main bolt that goes through the bushing because that can't really move. So all I'm interested in is these. Now this diff is still loose as you can see. It's not actually tight. I've only nipped them. But now I'm going to spin the wheel. You shouldn't really have to do this but it's just a, a thing to do just to make sure if the diff's going to move, if it's in a slightly awkward position it'll kind of self-centre itself. Uh, there's no real play in the, in the bushings where they go in. The hole's kind of more or less the same size as the bolt. But still, I like to do it just to, just to uh, make sure it's right. So that's, that's good. So I now know um, I can give all these a good squeeze. And uh, yeah, so I'm gonna give all these a good squeeze. No point me really filming anymore because obviously all I'm doing is tighten the bolts. So then I'm gonna, um, I'll turn the camera on once I get everything tight. And uh, We'll finish the video off. So now YouTube is just to sum up. Also, the front bearing or bushing, sorry, mount even has a longer piece. And again, that has to go towards diff. Now I wasn't lucky in getting this one in. I got this one in right first time. Wasn't luck. Wasn't a fluke. So yeah, keep an eye on all these bushings. There is a different thing. They do go in only one way. So to sum up, obviously that's it. Um, don't tighten any bolts until they're all in. Be careful when you do tighten them because you tighten them into a cast aluminium block. So just be careful because you can, you can easily snap them. A couple of bolts you can't see and if you're not on them right, you can round them and stuff. So you want to be careful. And now we'll go in and see if it moves like it did before. So at the start of this video, I could hold this and I could completely move it. And now as you can see, Obviously it's moving a tiny bit, that's just the rubber, but I cannot move that. That's nice and solid. It's good. Sorted. So, now, we have it done. I hope this helps. Um, and you don't make the mistakes like I showed you how not to make the mistakes. So you'll know to do it right and it won't take you half as long. Remember that, you learn that here, budget and leggy. So yeah. Look, thumbs up the video and subscribe and don't forget to get your hands dirty. See you in the next one.